Hello, this is Bradley Needham. I'm going to be talking about the copy and swap idiom. This idiom is commonly used to implement an assignment operator that provides the strong exception guarantee for a resource managing class. So let's start with a simple resource managing class. This class is not very useful in itself, but works well for this discussion. It is a simple class that dynamically allocates an array upon construction. Now when we have a resource managing class, we remember the rule of three, which tells us we need to write our own copy constructor, destructor, and assignment operator. So with this class, I already have a copy constructor and destructor, so what I need to do is write an assignment operator. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. First off, we know that the assignment operator is going to return a reference to itself, so... And now we have a parameter, and the first parameter we might decide to use is, let's say, it, we're going to do the same as the copy constructor itself, and use a const reference. Like I said, the ultimate return value of this will be a reference to the object itself, now let's see how we might implement it. So the first way we might try to implement this is initially, of course, we would do our check for self-assignment. And once we know that we're not dealing with the same object, if we were dealing with the same object, we would just return the object itself. Then we can go ahead and manipulate the internal structure of this object. So first, let's free up the memory that we own. And then let's reset the size and allocate new memory so we're going to say if there is um, size, so if we actually have size from the other, we're going to allocate a new array. And otherwise, we'll just set the pointer to zero. Now that we have the memory that we need, we're going to go ahead and copy it. And we'll just do the same as we did in the copy constructor and grab the copy from up here. All right, and there we have it. We have our assignment operator. Now. Although this assignment operator itself protects us against uh, exceptions in the sense that it supports the basic guarantee, it won't leak memory, it does not uh, maintain the state of the object if an exception is thrown. An example might be we come in here, we delete the data associated with the current object, we reset the size to a different size, the size of the object that's being assigned into it, and then this new operation here throws an exception. Well, in this case, we're not leaking any memory. However, we do have an issue in that the state of this object is different than it was before it entered into the assignment operator. So we would rather try and provide a strong exception guarantee. And in order to do that, we need to perform the operations like new here that may throw an exception previous to changing the data of the object itself. So one way we might do that is to move these operations before we do the operations that change the state of the object and perform them on temporary values. So I will create a temporary value for the size and a temporary value to hold the data. And then my copy will be of the temporary copy into the temporary data. And now that I've performed these operations that might throw, so if we came in here and this new operation threw, as it did before, through an exception, the state of this would still be valid. So there, now we're providing the strong guarantee. Let's finish up the change here. We're going to also not leak, so we're going to delete the data associated with the object previously. And then we're going to set the new values to the temporary values. Now one advantage of doing it this way, of course we had the, the first advantage which was provide the strong exception guarantee which we wanted, but we also no longer have to check for self-assignment. And this is because the um, operations that we're doing are solely on temporary objects and therefore we could actually copy you know, this new data from itself into a new chunk of data, delete the old data and reset it. Of course it would be more expensive However, in most cases, the test for self-assignment is going to turn up negative, right? We, you know, yes, we want to protect against self-assignment. However, it should not really be a very common thing that occurs in your system. Now, if it is, then you might want to use this efficiency trick. If it isn't, as in most cases, then you probably don't want it. You want to be able to handle the case, but you don't want to have to test for it all the time when most likely it's not going to occur. So now we can get rid of this. Let's go ahead and reformat our um, code here so it looks a little nicer. So now we've got rid of the test for self-assignment. However, 
we notice we've got a lot of duplicate code. Very duplicate code right here is these first three lines in the assignment operator are basically doing the exact same thing as the copy constructor does. And we'd rather do something only once if we can. So what we'd rather do than have these three lines of code is we'd like to utilize the copy constructor. So how do we do that? Well, we simply create a temporary object to be a copy of the passed in parameter. Now we can remove these three lines of code. And then we need to somehow swap the internal data associated with this copy with the current object, the this object in the assignment operator. So now we've got the copy part of the copy and swap and we need the swap part. So to have the swap part we need to provide a swap function and the swap function is going to be a global function that um, matches the signature of the standard swap functions but we will probably make it a friend, we'll make it easier because we need to um, manipulate internal data. So, so we now have a swap function that takes a first and second parameter which are references to a dynamic array and we will use, since our internal um, members are simply an integer and a pointer to an integer, we can use the standard swap functions with the library, the standard library, to perform the swaps on those objects and we simply swap the internal values and both of these swaps are no throw. They will not throw an exception and therefore we know we can get away with them without throwing an exception. And now we can go down here to the second part of our assignment operator and instead of doing these operations we can simply swap the data from this with the copy. And now we have our copy and swap. Now this is good and this provides our strong guarantee. It prevents us from having to check for self-assignment if we, if we don't want to. Um, but there is even a better way to do it. And the better way to do it, or <coughs> cleaner way to do it, is to actually allow the compiler to do the copy for us. So instead of us creating this copy in our implementation of the operator assignment, we simply change our parameter. So we get rid of this we simply change our parameter from a const reference to a value. The compiler does the copy and we simply swap with the copy that we had. Now the reason why this is a little bit better is that when you use C++11 we now have our value references and we have move constructors and move assignment operators. And with a move constructor you can actually, because you've, if you've written your assignment operator this way, the compiler will automatically call the move constructor if an R value reference happens to be being passed to the assignment operator. So you'll automatically get the benefit of the move constructor being called instead of the copy constructor if you do it in this way. So I'll just show you real quick what the signature for a move constructor looks like. I'm not going to go into details about it in this uh, lecture. So this is what you would have for your move constructor and by providing that move constructor you will basically get the benefit of by providing this move constructor your assignment operator will also use move semantics when it makes sense. Okay, I hope that helps.